a uh, few questions uh, on um, uh, ranking member alluded to this during his uh, opening statement mm -hmm. directly about sanctions uh, having them uh, are only as good as the sanction themselves uh, Aghani network um, how much money has the United States uh, government frozen in, regarding their network do we know well, um, the last published report that we have uh, is the terrorist uh, asset report that we put out on an annual basis. And the last one we have is actually published as of 2012. Um, and it's, it's retrospective. So unfortunately, we don't have um, figures that would encompass you know, the latest. Um, as of the end of 2012, we had not frozen specifically any assets from the Haqqani network, at least not insofar as the report details. But there are a couple things to bear in mind. One is, um, that, that report tends to focus pretty heavily on the state sponsors of terrorism. Of course, the Haqqani group is not a state sponsor of terrorism. It is a different kind of group. And uh, it also operates pretty much outside the realm of uh, the United States banking system and, and those areas where we might expect to find funds that we would uh, either freeze or, or seize. That said, I really want to highlight something, and I think uh, the ranking member kind of alluded to this. The power of our uh, sanctions and the power of our designations lies not so much always in how much money we freeze or we seize as assets here in the United States. What it allows us to do is oftentimes we take that designation, we move it to the UN, we're able then to mobilize a whole series of efforts that brings in the entire international financial community, raises the cost to that group or that entity or that individual so that um, no one is doing business with them. And these are the kinds of things, uh, both from a moral standpoint, but also from a very pragmatic standpoint, that we are able to do through our sanctions. We regard them very seriously. Uh, I think our Treasury colleagues would say the same. Uh, we are constantly uh, talking to our partners overseas uh, in order to get them to take those obligations seriously. Um, and we also, uh, through my bureau in particular, we put a lot of uh, effort against giving countries the skill set and the institutional structures they need to combat uh, terrorist finance. Okay. So, uh, based on what you said, do you, do you know of any nation, organization, uh, international organization that has seized any assets of the network? You know, uh, Congressman, I don't have that information with me now. It may be hard to track, to be honest with you, because I don't know that I have access to every country's, uh, you know, seizing or freezing of assets. But that said, we'll come back to you with this full answer. How about Boko Haram? Same question. Same question and, and a similar answer in that the, because the information that we have is as of 2012 uh, and Boko Haram was designated as an organization in 2013, I don't have that information for you. But that said, again, we can try and look and see whether certainly within the U.S. context or outside of it we can provide you with When that. will that report be updated? It's done on an annual basis, usually in May, but for the preceding calendar year, similar to the country reports on terrorism that we what do. What does the money in your budget go for? the money in the budget that we ask for out of the CT Bureau. Um, it goes for an array of programming. Um, we manage, and, and I just wanted to correct one thing uh, that uh, Mr. Sherman had, Congressman Sherman had said. I, I'm not sure where the 22 million figure came from. For FY15, uh, we'll be asking for a total of around $221 million. We, the CT Bureau ourselves, we manage roughly, or we would manage out of the request, about $104 million. The rest of that is put through regional bureaus and, and uh, both regional and bilateral lines of activity. Ambassador, where does the money go? What does it do? What does that money Those do? The taxpayer wants to know where that $20, $21 million goes. They ask us, what do we say? Absolutely. Um, what it does is it builds capacity among our counterterrorism partners all over the globe to what do does the things capacity we need them mean? to do. It means a variety simple. of things. I'm from Texas. Would you just keep it simple for us? Tell us what capacity sure. is. All right. It means that we have prosecutors who can prosecute bad guys. Okay. It means that we have judges who will, uh, who will judge those people within the rule of law. Does it go to weapons? Uh, not the money that we provide. Um, in some cases, the, the overall USG uh, counterterrorism effort may involve some of that, but not in the money that we, uh, through the State Department and through my bureau, we are providing to our partners. What it will do is it will provide them with legal assistance so that they can go after the money flows of terrorists. It will counter the messaging that the terrorists and the extremists are putting out there. It will do a number of things to empower women and youth uh, who are particularly vulnerable in, in communities that are at risk uh, to extremism. 
It will go towards a whole array of programming uh, on the multilateral side. So, for example, we now support something called the Global Counterterrorism Forum, which is a gathering of countries that is specifically designed to address terrorism issues and to put out best practices so that they're all following a, a kind of a design, again, to, to combat terrorist flow of, uh, of money and all the other things that I just spoke of. So Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. I want to mm -hmm. have to cut you off because sure. I want those guys, these gentlemen over here to ask questions. The ranking member. 